It's just it's just three stormtroopers like chilling in a pose with like alien writing, but I swear it's got to say, "Join the Empire today." Oh my that's, god! That's got to be what it says, honestly. Hello and welcome to my Tasteful review of Star Wars Battlefront 2. I just received this as a gift from a fan, so you know I'm going to review it, starting with the campaign. But first things first though, I have only put about 45 hours give or take into this game right now, and the first thing I want to tell you is the game is beautiful looking, and it stays true towards lore. So if you want to get a game where you can go out as Darth Maul, hear John Williams score in the background as you wreck people with your lightsaber, then buy the damn game. Nothing I say is going to change your mind. But if you want to see if it has a little bit more substance than just the sound and the looks, then continue watching. So in the campaign, you get to play as Aiden Versio, a member of the infamous Inferno Squad. A special unit that is essentially the Star Wars version of SEAL Team 6 meets the KGB, give or take. Aiden and her two squad mates go through the turmoil that is the after effects of Emperor Palpatine's death, along with the destruction of the Death Star 2. Not the second Death Star, no, Death Star 2. Because apparently that is the actual title. Look at the multiplayer map. It's Death Star 2. Whatever. My whole life is a lie. Anyway, there is a laughable mission strewn about your time in the campaign, with its total runtime being about five to six hours, depending on difficulty and if you're looking for collectibles and you know, enjoying the backgrounds and stuff, so on nuances. But you change sides after learning. No goodness, the dark side is bad. Who would have thunk it? Iden switches because. She sees a bunch of civilians getting killed. Whoops. And after you switch sides, you get to play as Luke, Leia, Han, and Lando uh, after switching sides. And uh, you get to play some Iden in some missions as a rebel, too, as much as probably is about the same as you get to play as her being. No, probably less, honestly. Probably less missions of her being a rebel slash older version of herself than, you know, her younger Empire slash First Order self. Um, but those are those some of those missions. Know, Another big part of the game is the 298 space missions. I'm being sarcastic. The space battle missions are just ridiculous and numerous in quantity. Space battles look amazing, but control like dog poo and are slightly repetitive and numerous, like I said. Dice last game, Battlefield 1, it's, it's fine. Mechanics are relative ease, and I feel like normal players can get the hang of it pretty soon. But with this game, it's just ridiculous. Pretty, but boy, there are a lot of unnecessary deaths because of controls or random space debris that is just constantly moving around. I get that battles produce debris in the Star Wars universe, but if I'm turning around in a video game while I'm getting tagged by a rocket or something, and it's like evade, and I try to evade, and I get killed by a random debris, that's not necessarily my fault as the gamer. In the early in the video, when I go behind those six stormtroopers and I whack one of them and they all turn on me, that is my fault. I'm an idiot. You know, it's funny, but it's my fault. But that's that's the difference between a gamer's fault and the game's fault. Ignoring the space battles and the special hurry missions, when like I said, you can play as Luke, Leia, Han, and Lando, you don't get all that much time with Aiden as an officer. Fuck you. You get more old Aiden than you do dark side Aiden. More on that later. Yeah. So after seeing the First Order Empire start killing civvies, like I said, you start losing your faith. And your squad mate, who is like definitely your future husband, even though there's they don't give anything away, you just you just you just know it's that obvious. Uh both decide to switch sides. Uh because at this point, somehow your your second squad mate, your future hubby, somehow met Luke Skywalker and they were like talking and Luke got a campus and there were some bug killings and he's like yeah I just want to switch sides too baby let's go <sighs> Very goodness. and so their third squad mate didn't like that and you have a scuffle with him and Aiden's dad who is like the other main antagonist is like the fifth in command of like the empire slash first order kind of thing uh, they're both pissed at you so they both send some bros some troopers your way to kill you you escaped and get captured by the rebels on purpose to tell them about the massive amount of slave child brainwash troops the First Order has, something like that. Because at this point the Rebels are thinking, nah, there ain't that many left. So Lando and all the other heroes are like, hell yeah, you can join. Killed like 500 Rebels, but eh, you're fine. Join the Rebellion, you old scallywags. So you start playing some missions on the good side. You save some lives, redeem yourself, kind of. Kill but not really kill your old squad mate, that third guy. 
that didn't switch and you try and save your dad but he goes all good guy for two seconds and goes down with the ship to pay for his sins quickest 180 ever so you really don't take care of one of your two enemies he is nice and he's all like you're kind of okay kid i didn't cute dramatic death and in campaign <gasps> but wait there's more the campaign is technically split into two even though combined it is like the five to six hours i told you about in length so the second part flashes forward some years and your hubby gets murdered by your third squad mate who, <gasps> surprise, is not dead and whose name is stupid and not important at this point. So when you're, you and your daughter go about finding him, you know, killing some guy to find out where you're going, blah, blah, blah. You go murder his face and you blow up a pizza slice ship and it's all good fun. Then Naiden dies too. So you, the character, who is the only one left as a kid who you never play as, and some other cool guy, which is like the only cool guy in the game, Shiv, you guys go and you're like, well, everyone's dead. Let's go meet up with the rebellion. And uh, this is, I think, near the near the complete start of episode seven. At this point in the timeline, and they're like, yo, Leia, what up, girl? We're ready to do some stuff. And she's like, oh, Infernal Squad. Even though that's the bad guy name, and all of them are dead. Uh, she calls this child and this random alien dude Infernal Squad. Cool, whatever. And it's they're like yo what do we do and she's like go do other stuff because i'm gonna do other stuff and they're like cool cool beans that sounds great and that's the end of the campaign all in all there's a lot of cool things like playing as the millennium falcon is kind of cool you know the only sucky thing is that the campaign missions were you know where the second thought which i get this is the triple a title game made by dice their main aspect is going to be focusing on multiplayer, but I think that suffers because of it. If you think about it, even in a game like COD World War II, there's multiple points in the campaign that you don't see in multiplayer maps. I might eat my words as the DLC comes out, but in terms of the original base game that you know kids will buy, you know, for you know parents will buy for the kids, or you know just a you know cheap college kid can buy, you know, at that point, it's. You, you probably won't see the DLC, so, war. you know, your maps that you see shouldn't be always the same as the campaign. But here, they push so hard to get all the aspects of the different locations and everything. It's just force. So what I mean by that is that in the multiplayer, you can play in all three eras. The First Order, the, you know, back when the Galactic Senate was a thing, you know, in the first, uh, the second trilogy, technically, the first trilogy, and the third trilogy, which is currently ongoing. You get to play in all aspects of that. So you get to play all the ships, all the characters, all the models, and which means in my head that, you know, that'd be cool just to see it in multiplayer. But they force it to the point where you see it in campaign, and I think that's unnecessary, and it kind of takes me out of it. Because they brought up Naboo sh pilot ships, like the ones you see in The Phantom Menace, you know, in the same timeline where Episode 7 is about to happen. And that really took me out of the game. I don't. It wasn't necessarily. And you could have had any ship. Just made a ship. You know, even if it looked like crap. You know, it was something that didn't need to be in multiplayer. That I could have just saw, and I'd been fine and dandy. But you forced a Naboo pilot ship into the random corner of like a space battle, and that was just unnecessary. And stuff like that. Locations too. You know, where you get sent to is just extra. And you know, they just didn't want to make another place or something for the campaign that was by itself. So everything you see in campaign has components of it in a multiplayer. And sure, Battlefield 1 also did that, but it wasn't as noticeable, I think. Because I feel like you, in Battlefield 1, it was all the same time. It was World War 1, like, all the time, frankly. Like, there's not a lot of places you can build. And even then, a lot of multiplayer maps don't show up in campaign, and a couple campaign maps don't show up in multiplayer as of yet. But in this game, I haven't, I haven't found one place in the campaign that wasn't a multiplayer and one multiplayer place that wasn't in the Bye. campaign. And that kind of annoys me on a, little, on a little scale. But in terms of an actual campaign, it's still f it's still fun. You still get cool aspects, cool moments, you know, piloting the AT-18 just wrecking face like in the beginning of the video. It looks gorgeous. I can't get over that. Look at this. This is amazing looking technology and I'm so sad that the game got bashed on because this is beautiful. I'm sure the game kind of deserves it, but look at this. This is something I would see in the theaters with the Star Wars film. It is gorgeous and it's so great. And oh gosh, it's so amazing. And I think that's like the one aspect you need to take away from this is that the game looks brilliant. It looks
looks phenomenal. And I think that's where I'm going to end the campaign part. It's okay. You'll have fun aspects if you like Star Wars. You're not going to be shocked by any plot twists or anything like that. But it's a joyous romp in the park if you dig Star Wars. I'll see you guys in part two where we talk about multiplayer. Now, part two, multiplayer. Multiplayer, I have about 30 hours in. I think I put about 10 or so into the campaign, playing up twice, and to see, you know, different, different difficulties, but the rest is all multiplayer. That's all I need to play. I really don't want to beat a dead horse, because I say that as I'm showing supply drop stuff. But, guys, it's so unnecessary. And it is so hard to get. That is my rarest thing I've ever gotten in my 15 plus hours playing multiplayer. I'm getting multiple different spy grades. I never even got the highest tier. At least in Call of Duty 2, where you know, there's other discrepancies with it, at least I still get epic and rare stuff. It might be an outfit, it might be you know, a weapon, it might be a calling card, but it's something. I get something that is rare or, you know, ultra rare, or whatever you want to call it, or whatever color it is. I don't get that. Usually here it's common, 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 community. And it gets repetitive over time. That's why I'm having the heavy metal in the background here. Well, heavy metal, whatever. But the, fir the first one was there when I said part two, which is the player, and it's due to me playing as Darth Maul with only the auto deck. That's the most fun you're going to have is playing as heroes and villains. You're not going to have too much fun doing this, shooting a shooter with a gun, you know. You're going to get, you know, pumped. The most fun you can have in this, sure the space battles are kind of fun, but the most fun you can have is playing as the heroes or the villains. And get it, have, hear the music, that's why the Dark Maul moment I like, unaltered. It is pure you, you put you plug in for the first time as Darth Maul, and you cue in and you hear the duel of the fates in the background as you start running and you hear the pure saber sounds and when I start throwing it in the whatever I can't make the laser black saber sound noise but god that is pure god that is cocaine for the first you know, two hours or so then it gets old because you start getting curb stomped by stupid ray with like power five cards or whatever and someone might say that you can't notice players and you have a fair chance that you have no cards to play against someone that has it really well high up rare cards I mean, that's a false lie. If you're facing someone with more cards, better cards than you, with the same intelligence as you, you're fucked. You are in the ass. Fuck. And I'm sorry. But that's, that, that's how it is. Me playing all my time, I've never beat someone that I would think is the same skill set as me. If someone's better than me, they're better. I can't pretend that. You know, that's why I don't win all the time in Fortnite or all you know, I don't win in college all the time. You know, you gotta admit fault somewhere because, you know, not all of us are the best players, but when I fight someone I think has equal equal or even lesser skills than I do, and they have the better cards than me, I'm going to lose probably. And, you know, I can make comparisons in other games of how I do, you know, I do pretty well in Fortnite, COD, and, you know, Battlefield 1, and all these other games, and then I compare it to what I do in this game. There's a staggering difference, and I don't want to point out the card, but my cards are level 1 commons, or I have no cards, or I'm not able to buy cards, or I'm not able to get a certain hero, and it's just it's just a lot of unnecessary crap. It could have been great, because it's just like the campaign, this is beautiful. That first part with, part with the Darth Maul running, 
and him jumping, like all everyone jumping in the forest things, it's beautiful. Sure, combat kind of looks like a potato when you're just whacking someone with a lightsaber and they're not dying. It's kind of weird, but it's still beautiful, man. It's still great to hear the John Williams score in the background. But the, you know, the thing with the credits and like how much you get at the end of the match, you know, in terms of how you do and just all this stuff is just it's just bad. And there's a couple other things that don't make sense, just in terms of gameplay, you know, you think at this point maybe I'm just rambling or whatever, but there's a point in multiplayer when you're playing like an Operations, essentially, like Battlefield 1 equivalency with Operations in this game, where you have to go attack two different points, an A and a B, and you know, it gives you like some reason like, oh, don't let the Rebels or don't let the Empire like, take these two points. In Battlefield 1 and most other games, if you take one point, let's say you take A, half your team needs to protect A, the other half needs to go get the butt to B and take it. Not in this game. In this game, you take A or B, let's say you take A again, in this game you take A, it's gone, it's done. You know, you don't have to defend it or anything, so it just turns into a mesh of people at B. The whole team is at B. And it turns into a grenade, a lobby, and hero, villain fest, and it just gets messy and unnecessary and gross. Necessary, you know, and it's not even smart. It doesn't make any sense in its lore because you're like, you know, hold these points so the rebels can't escape. In my mind, that means I need to keep and hold both so the rebels can't escape. Not take one, tell like we got the location, and then fucking leave the location. That doesn't make any sense in terms of actual combat or just you know anything. And so I thought that was weird, especially since it's the same company as the same developer as the ones who would say capture and hold A and B not or, or one at a time. Because then what's stopping you, like, when you first get the two objectives, the whole team go after A, capture it, then the whole team go after B. It's not very tactical, that's just, you know, amassing, that's kind of like a pff, Soviet Union kind of tactic in World War II, just keep on sending bodies there until you get it. You know, that's not fun gameplay, I don't think, in my mind. All in all, though, it's still fun. It's still a Star Wars game, and so if you enjoy Star Wars, like I've said in the campaign part, if you still enjoy Star Wars, you're going to enjoy this, probably. But if you really don't like the culture of, you know, supply drops and stuff like that, then I wouldn't get it. Maybe if it comes on sale for 20 bucks later in the year, I don't know what this cost me, you know, as it was a gift, and that's the only reason why I'm playing it myself. You know, because of the whole controversy behind it and how it's done, and... I don't want to support that, but I got it as a gift, I'm going to play it, and then, you know, if I can make any YouTube money off this, I might as well. But the, I guess the only thing you want to take away is this, is if you get angry easily at being at an unfair advantage, don't play this game. If you get angered by supply rates and credits and stuff like that, don't play this game. If you love Star Wars and don't let it be soiled by this kind of stuff, don't play this game. If you love Star Wars unequivocally and nothing can alter your opinion on Star Wars or anything like that, get this game. But wait a couple of months and see if it gets on sale sometime soon. Or maybe there's going to be a developer sale later in the summer, maybe summer, summer hours. Or if you're a PC Master Race, see if anything comes up on the Steam sale, something like that. And that's my only advice to you guys is to, you know, if you're true, you'll love it. If you're not true to it, I'm sorry. You're not going to enjoy this game. So uh, that's it for me. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is one of my longest, more edited, more thought-provoking videos I've done. I mean, it's kind of weird for me. It's kind of not my territory. My territory is usually just plugging in random funny bits I think is funny. You know, not really putting my own opinion and thought out there. So it'd be greatly appreciated if you give me a subscribe or just like it or just tell your friends. That's the biggest compliment you can give me as a small YouTuber. The biggest compliment you can, you can say, I found this guy. He's kind of okay. He's not garbage. You know, tell a friend. That's the biggest compliment you can give me. You know, more than a subscribe, subscription and a like. Although I appreciate it all. So that being said, uh, it's St. Patrick's Day where I'm at. So where everyone's at at the time of this recording but at this current moment of time it's like bad day so i'm gonna go enjoy it you guys have a safe one out there enjoy spring breaks if you got it or if you already had spring break i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in the next one